With recent iOS and watchOS software updates, Apple has become increasingly health conscious with their software and hardware, and iOS 14 takes that another step forward in several key areas. This year, Apple is focusing on native sleep support, a better nighttime phone experience, adding new data fields and workouts to the iPhone and Apple Watch in the health app and beyond. So first, let's talk about sleep. So in the health app, you can go into the sleep tab, and there you can see sleep data. So if you have a health tracker like I have, I have a Nokia sleep tracker, and it will send the data to the health app where I can analyze it and look at it. But you can also set a schedule, which was here before iOS 14, but now this schedule goes a little bit further. So you can do the schedule like you had before, which would be a bedtime and a wake up time, and this would previously put your phone into a low power mode and then also wake you up at a set time. But now Apple has added a wind down feature, which instead of just dimming your screen and putting on do not disturb, you now get to set how long your wind down period is. You can add shortcuts to your wind down to launch certain things like a playlist that you might want on music or a book that you might want to read or weather to check the weather or calendar, podcast, things like that. And that'll add that right to your lock screen. But then you can also customize what the screen looks like when it has this mode on. You can have it turn on automatically or not, or you can just do it via control center. You can have it show the time or not. You can have it track time in bed with your iPhone. So if you don't have an Apple Watch, it can still track just the time you're in bed by the time it turns on and off. And you can have sleep reminders and then sleep results in the morning. Now, ideally, you're going to be using this with your Apple Watch. And with your Apple Watch, it's going to use the accelerometer to trace and track movements throughout the night and heart rate. And it'll give you a comprehensive sleep analysis in the morning when you wake up. It'll also put your Apple Watch on a low power darkness mode and do not disturb so you can sleep through the night and get your sleep data in the morning. So while it's not strictly necessary to have an Apple Watch with watchOS 7 to use some of these features, if you want the actual activity tracking of your sleep, you're going to need an Apple Watch, but otherwise you can still have nice wind down features to help you get ready for the night by having a phone with less distractions, quick access to things that you might need at night, and a nice dark screen in do not disturb mode. So that is wind down in the sleep settings. Next, there's a new feature called Health Checklist. A Health Checklist is basically a list of things that you can have in terms of health and safety on your phone and your Apple Watch. And you can see which ones you have active, such as Medical ID, Emergency SOS, Fall Detection, and Low Heart Rate Notifications, ECG, and Noise Notifications, especially on the Apple Watch Series 4 and 5, and any that you don't have active. And this is simply a list to make sure that you have all the health and safety features turned on on your watch and your iPhone and iOS 14, and it includes the hand washing one for watch OS 7, which will track and help you get to 20 seconds of hand washing. Next, there are new data types. So in mobility, we have several new settings. So first we have walking speed, which is pretty self-explanatory to tell you how fast your walking has been recently, and you can look at it over time, and you can see your trends. You also have walking asymmetry to see if your walk is not balanced, to see if the timing is a little bit off in your walk and your stride, and you see what percent it is. You have your double support time, which sees the percentage of time that you have both feet on the ground at the same time when you're walking, and it says it should be between 20 and 40 percent is typical, and you can see that range right there. And then you also have some other things, such as six minute walk, which is how far do you get distance wise on a six minute flat walk, and you can see the type of distance you can get there. I don't have any data for that yet. And then you have stair speed for up and down. So you're walking upstairs and downstairs. Uh, how long does it take you both ways? So all these features work together to just give you more data and more input into your life. Most of these can work just from your iPhone having it near your hip or your waist and it will track your walking. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but these are new metrics here. So you can use that for kind of tracking, analyzing your health, your fitness, and more. We also have a new health records tab. So you can add an account and link it with a hospital or health center that you use. And this will simply allow you to sync data and results and communicate better with your health app. In the symptoms tab, there are now 13 new symptoms that you can log, including things such as mood changes, night sweats, wheezing, tiredness, fatigue, and more. So there's now 39 total symptoms that you can log and keep track of how you're doing, feeling, 
and otherwise functioning day to day. And of course, generally there's now a new hand washing feature that will recognize when you're washing your hands with the Apple Watch and do a 20 second countdown so you're making sure that you're washing your hands for a long enough time. Uh, most people find this pretty funny, but it is there for Watch OS 7 as well. So if you have an Apple Watch, instead of activity, it will now say fitness on that app for, I guess, a more holistic name to your, well, your fitness. And now we have activity, workouts, awards, and trends all on one page instead of separate pages. So you can see your activity up top, your workouts below that, your trends, and your awards. You also have four new workouts, which are dance, functional strength training, core training, and a cool down feature. And for cyclers and bike riders for exercising or commuting, Maps now has elevation data, bike lanes, and traffic density to help you get the best ride for exercise or for commuting with your Apple Watch or without your Apple Watch if you're, again, cycling with iOS 14 and Watch OS 7. So those are the changes to health, fitness, sleep, and more with iOS 14 and watch OS 7. Anyway, stay tuned for plenty more iOS 14 coverage as we prepare for the release of iOS 14 in its full form to the public later this month or early next month.